As little as 800 years ago, New Zealand was a world dominated by birds, with only three bat species making up every single mammalian inhabitant on the island. Instead of large herbivorous animals grazing on the vegetation, there were the giant moa birds. Instead of small nocturnal rodents scurrying on the forest floor, there was the kiwi. And you would not need to watch out for large cats, but keep an eye on the skies, as the apex predator was a giant eagle, the Hast's eagle. Hast's eagle, scientifically known as Harpagornis moray, was significantly larger than any living eagle, and is the largest bird of prey ever discovered, being the only known eagle apex predator of a large ecosystem. Eagle females are usually larger than males, and Harpagornis was thought to be no different, with the largest females approaching 15 kilos in weight, twice the weight of the Stella's sea eagle, the heaviest currently living species. However, their wingspan was not that long, the largest individuals having wings measuring no more than 3 meters, and they were probably much more typically around 2.5 meters. This is not much larger than the largest living eagles today. In the past, this has been mistaken for the birds transitioning towards flightlessness, but this is almost certainly not the case, as shortening but broadening of the wings is sometimes seen in flying birds to better adapt to forest dwelling. Although their wings were short, the wing area was probably much larger, sacrificing the ability to soar in the skies to better navigate the forest without clipping their wings on branches. The eagle was first described in 1871, while the species was thought to have only died out as recently as 600 years ago. This was not an ancient fossil in prehistory. The animal only went extinct a few hundred years before its discovery. Their remains have only been found in New Zealand's South Island, apart from one specimen that was found on Stewart Island. Their bones have been discovered from sea level well into the mountains, and it is possible they may have roamed at altitudes right up to the tree line. Much how it was mistaken that Harpagornis was transitioning into flightlessness, upon its discovery it was thought that the creature was an obligate scavenger, and suggesting that it was a predator was controversial. We now know that this couldn't have been further from the truth. Harpagornis was surely not above the occasional scavenge, but was a skilled hunter that specialised in killing the other giant on the island, the 3 meter tall mower. As there were no large herbivores on the island, the moa was basically filling the niche of an animal like a giraffe, a long-necked grazer. It was the largest creature in New Zealand at this time, and they were the Hast's eagle's favourite food. There are numerous examples of moa remains found with puncture wounds that could only be made by the eagle. This only shows that moas were fed upon and not hunted, but Harpagornis has been found all over the island, and the only thing that ties all these habitats together are the presence of moas. If Hast's eagle was a scavenger, you would expect to find their remains everywhere, as they would surely take advantage of all dead prey, as they needn't be as picky once the animal is already dead. It seems that the eagles did not just hunt the large mower, but were heavily ecologically connected with a strong predator-prey relationship. They were dedicated mower killers. They would have preyed on the other large flightless birds that existed in New Zealand at the time, but the vast majority of wounds they inflicted on animals have been discovered on mower remains. In particular, the South Island species of mower that was the largest of them all, standing up to 3.5 metres tall, it seemed the most common way they took down these large animals was by swooping down to cut through their pelvis with their lion claw sized talons and then killed them with a strike to the neck or the head. They made up for the 15 fold weight difference by hitting them at very high speeds. Humans would have shared the island with these giant birds for some period of time, as the Maori are thought to have made it to New Zealand no later than 1280. So did humans ever fall victim to the eagle's wrath? There is no shortage of sensationalist articles claiming the eagles have snatched people's babies and then flown away to never be seen again. However, there is no hard evidence that eagles have ever killed a human. Golden eagles have been caught on camera killing animals as large as seeker deer, and have also been seen trying to knock large animals off cliff edges, hoping gravity will do the work for them. This shows they can kill animals considerably larger than themselves, and are intelligent enough to find workarounds when an animal may be too large for them to attack conventionally. By and far, the best evidence for eagles being capable of killing humans is a specimen known as a tongue child. It was a small Australopithecine child, a human relative, that was killed due to severe head injuries, and it is highly likely that these were caused by a large bird of prey, most likely the African crowned eagle. Given the evidence of how powerful and cunning the largest living eagles are, I would say an eagle twice the size certainly would have been capable of killing a human, but if they ever did, or even if they actively hunted humans, is considerably less likely. The Maori actually have a legend of a giant bird named Paukai that in some legends would kill and eat humans. Although Hast Eagle was very likely the inspiration for this legendary bird, this could easily be due to observing the eagles murdering mowers rather than actually hunting humans. 
Although these eagles were unquestionable giants, it seems they may have had very humble beginnings. It was thought that due to the eagle's great size, its closest relatives were the largest eagles alive today, in particular the wedge-tailed eagle that is the largest bird of prey in Australia. However, DNA evidence shows that its closest relative was most likely the little eagle, also native to Australia, this little bird rarely exceeding a kilo in weight. Hast's eagle's evolutionary pathway is probably best compared to the Philippines eagle, that is the largest currently living eagle by body size. The Philippines eagle was also lumped in with other giant birds, but DNA evidence has it more closely related to the much more moderately sized snake eagles. It probably evolved its large size due to lower predator competition on the Philippines than on the mainland. Harpagornis is estimated to have diverged from these smaller species of eagle as little as 1 to 2 million years ago, meaning their size increase would have been very rapid. This tenfold weight increase would have almost certainly been due to a lack of large land predators in New Zealand at that time. Modern day eagles have to be weary of being chased off their hard earned prey by a large land carnivore, and so are often restrained to only killing what they can carry. Even the largest eagles would struggle to carry much more than 5 kilos, and would probably need favourable wind conditions to carry any more than about 2 kilos, despite being able to kill much larger prey than this. Some species of vulture are even known to purposefully follow eagles around and steal their prey once they've caught it, even waiting for the eagle to cut open the hide for them with their sharp beak, before scaring them away. The Hast's eagle, being the apex predator of the land, would have no such worries, and would be able to kill their favourite prey, the giant mower, and then monopolise the carcass for days, only needing to worry about the competition with members of their own species. Flying animals usually have more demanding energy requirements than land animals. For instance, although they may go some days without eating, the golden eagle averagely needs to consume as much as 15% of its body weight a day, whereas a coyote needs less than half this and as an animal increases in size, it will get exponentially heavier and need exponentially more energy to sustain itself. Due to this, it is sensible to assume that the Hast's eagle required a larger percentage of its body weight in food than smaller eagles. Having much less competition from other predators would have allowed Hast's eagle to break free from the size restrictions and hunt much larger prey to satisfy their more demanding dietary requirements. And as a consequence, you had a 15 kilo eagle eating a 200 kilo moa. Unfortunately, this may have been the reason for its downfall, as in order to sustain itself, it needed to have a plentiful supply of mowers, and when the Maori arrived in New Zealand, they also developed a taste for this giant bird. They preyed heavily on all flightless birds, eventually driving many of them to extinction, including all species of mower. It is also very possible that early human settlers could have attacked or scared eagles off their prey and taken the food for themselves. This is evidenced by eagle bones being discovered in Maori settlements. The eagles previously not needing to worry too much about their catches being stolen may have had no defence for this. Until human colonisation of New Zealand, birds occupied all major animal niches, and the Hast eagle was the undisputed apex predator, filling the same predator niche as a large cat. The arrival of humans on the island threw the eagle into competition with another predator, and unfortunately this was a competition the eagle would eventually lose, going extinct as recently as the 1400s. Thank you for watching. If you want to be notified of future uploads, consider subscribing. Thank you for the kind support from my patrons, especially David Vanderroost and Fozzleworth. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.